Good morning, YouTube world. 2022 Bronco. This is a Black Diamond Edition non Sasquatch Bronco. I can go over the, the accessories and whatnot that, or I should say, options that come with this thing when I got it. It's, it's a fairly basic Black Diamond. This is the Bronco that I wanted when they first came out with them. Uh, waited a while, waited a while, and finally I found a 22 that was on the lot. Uh, I usually name my Bronco something dumb. This, uh, this girl stays dirty all the time, so I'm thinking about Dirty Diana. Let me know what you think about that. Again, 2022 Black Diamond. I did not do a video on this particular Bronco before I did the modifications to it. <clears throat> it is my daily driver right now. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I drive down a very long gravel road to commute back and forth every day before I get on the highway. So she stays dirty road can get pretty rough so as of right now the Bronco's got a couple thousand miles on it nothing crazy the only additions that I've made to the vehicle is I did a lift that's very similar to the height of a Sasquatch and I have also added the tires cut Turk get over here Turk get over here now Get in here. Cut. So this is the same size that is running on the Bronco Sasquatch package. It is a, see here, 315-7017. I think later in this video, we'll be doing a, a on highway and a gravel ride. And I think I say 315-75, so correct me on that one. Again, this is the Sasquatch package tire size. I think they run a good year maybe. This is a Neato Recon Grappler. It is a newer tire. I think I'm going to do a short video on these and what I think about them so far after I get a few more miles on them. I mean, they're a Neato. They're a quality tire. They look good. And I'll get into that again, like I said, on another video. So, again, two-inch puck lift. It's a rough country. And running the Sasquatch tires, or the Sasquatch tire size, rather. This is uh, factory fender flares. I like the way they look side profile to me on the sasquatch fenders are a little ridiculous looking i know why they're like that but so moving on on the wheels on this particular bronco it does have the wheel option to me it's one of the best looking forward wheels they've ever made i'm a i'm a spoke wheel guy five six spoke wheels speak to me i like them i really like black wheels and they knocked it out of the park with these when I go over the offset and the wheel and tire package, when I do the tire video, I'll talk more about that, but you can see that I do still have my crash bars, front and rear. There is very minimal scrubbing if you're doing some off camber turning when you're at full lock, but it's very minimal. And once you get used to where you can and cannot turn, you don't notice it anymore. Uh, I could take them off, but they don't they don't hinder me on a daily driving application, so I'm gonna leave them alone. So as far as the outside of the Bronco guys, the lift, I've added the tires. There's no wheel spacers, that is the factory offset. So um, I didn't have to modify anything, I didn't have to change the stance. It, it's it's pretty nice to me the way that it come out with the factory wheels. If you can see down the side, they got a little bit of I guess they say poke. It's hanging out of the fender maybe a half inch, but I really like the way it looks. It doesn't beat the side of the Bronco up too bad, especially the way I drive. Uh, but wheels, tires, two inch rough country lift. It was pretty easy to install that lift. I did have the dealer give me the hitch package. They didn't install it. I uh, probably should have done a video on installing that, but there's several out there, so there's really no point in me doing that. I do have a clip to mount the plug in and full disclosure. I uh, put this together, mounted it up, <clears throat> didn't test it, and I don't think I have a good ground. So I'm going to have to take my panels back off and try to find a better ground. I'm pretty sure I got it grounded to some type of aluminum and it isn't, uh, isn't making good contact with the frame. Moving on, as far as anything else I've done to the Bronco, I haven't done any performance modifications. I haven't done anything to the interior. I do have the windows tinted. The... Soft top and rear windows were pretty dark, so I had to match the front. 
to the back and I also put an eyebrow on it on the end cab video footage later you're gonna see that part of my recording going down the highway uh, I didn't uh, I didn't get my camera at the right angle so I'm kind of bouncing up on that eyebrow a little bit but I'll talk about that in the video you'll see what I'm talking about uh, black diamond basic interior situation you can see I use this dude I didn't clean it before the video this is how I drive it this is how I keep it I do try to keep the inside of it pretty clean but right now she's dirty nothing special going on in here didn't even put it back in park look at that you got me she uh, she's a good daily driver I'll probably talk about gas mileage and things like that a little bit later but it does have the marine vinyl seats in it I think this is this is probably not real leather it's whatever Ford puts on all their non loaded vehicles feels like leather looks like leather but I don't think it really is as far as added options I'm not hundred percent sure the dealer is supposed to be getting me the window sticker so I can see what has and hasn't been added I think the switches right there are an option I think I'm not sure if the black diamond comes with that or not this one doesn't have everything here but I noticed that it does have trail assist and the rear uh, rear diff lock so that could have been an added option beyond that that's it uh, pretty basic I'm liking this guy so far for the people that want to know for the gas mileage it was getting about 20 and a half maybe 21 miles per gallon on my daily commute which is uh, on the Natchez Trace Parkway which you'll see later in the video speed limits 50 miles an hour so I'm usually under 60 driving to work so that probably bodes well for getting a little better fuel mileage so getting about 20 and a half 21 miles a gallon I did the lift and tires and it is now sitting around 18 and a half to 19 now full disclosure I have not changed the uh, speedometer so it is off it is about five I'm gonna say four to five miles an hour uh, slower it's registering four miles an hour slower than what I'm actually running so when I'm sitting at 54 I'm actually running somewhere around 58 I do plan on buying the Ford programmer give me a little bit of fuel mileage back I think it'll correct the speedometer give me a little bit of power as you can see that's the reason we're gonna call her dirty Diana she she's orange most of the time but yeah if I get that corrected I'll check the fuel mileage again I run regular e10 fuel in it I don't think I've put premium in it yet but if I did I don't remember it I don't remember it changing anything I think Ford claims if you want the full horsepower rating you have to run premium in it so after I do the programmer I might do a tank or two of premium to see if there's a difference I don't notice any power issues with this guy it's got the four cylinder in it it is not the v6 and it uh it pulls good guys I mean if you're not going to be trailering anything I don't really see the need in the v6 it's uh way worse fuel mileage and 300 horsepower in this Bronco is more than enough to do what you need to do it pulls good even with these bigger tires on it so test drive them both and like I said they don't have a lot of towing capacity anyway so if you're not going to plan if you're not going to pull a, a, a bigger trailer with it you know maxing the towing capacity out I see no reason in getting the v6 unless you just want to brag about having the bigger engine yeah hopefully the wind isn't too bad on here it's blowing pretty good out here with this media mod it may have may have helped but yeah we're gonna move on to the video uh, move on with the video and get into the the road manners and whatnot and we'll get this thing out to you guys as soon as i can i should have done this a month ago but like i said i'm i'm just busy and i don't have a lot of time but hopefully this uh gets some information out to people that have a bronco and they want to talk to somebody that is a, just a normal guy driving it every day wanted to get a really good idea of the daily commute that i have in this bronco i've had it for about two months now and we are sitting at i'm not sure if you guys can see that we're 4100 miles right now i drive this every day <clears throat> a lot of people that buy these things 
they never touch dirt. They never they never leave the pavement. It's just the nature of it. You know, having vehicles in the world we're in now. This Bronco, on the other hand, <clears throat> gets more off-road on the way to work every day than most people see in their life. Uh, I commute about four and a half miles of gravel a day. Our roads are maintained for the most part regularly. Got good gravel on the road most of the time. We got pretty heavy rain, some storms last night. It's been raining on and off. Weird system of, of straight line wind, thunderstorms, rain has been coming through. So as far as the condition of the road, this is a very good indication of what it's like after we get a lot of water. So, you know, compared to some other parts of the world, I, I can't really complain about the quality of the road. Let me get this all rigged out. The road does get pretty mushy from time to time. The road does get pretty mushy from time to time, especially in some of the lower spots. Some of this red dirt that's the road base, it just kind of turns to rot. And it's quite sticky. It slings all over the Bronco. I've had it, uh, I've had it since it was brand new and I, I've never hand washed it. I pressure wash it pretty good, but. Road's really rough through here, washboards. The Bronco handles it really well. It certainly handles it better than a Jeep does. In full disclosure, we've had several Jeeps. So I feel like if anybody's going to compare the two as far as driving them in this type of condition we've got enough experience to say that the Bronco is a better a better ride I won't get into any of the other arguments that they have between the two I just know for sure this front end with this independent suspension system is better suited for ride quality for a daily driver Pretty rough right there. You probably can't tell from the camera, but that was a pretty chopped up spot where the water washed part of the road away. Uh, notice that the GoPro tends to flatten things out like that, so it's a little hard to a little hard to tell. My commute is, like I said before, it's about two and a half, three miles one way on gravel, so six, six or a little over six miles every day on this type of road. Then I've got about 25-ish miles of pavement. So it, it gets some miles on it. It's not a weekend ride. It's not a toy. I had an F-150 before this and I've been wanting one of these. It probably wasn't the most practical decision to make, but I've enjoyed the, I've enjoyed the hell out of it so far. Again, I don't, I don't think the camera's gonna pick it up, but it's washed you know, half of the road base away right here overnight. I've got some toolboxes and things in the back of this rig. Uh, just bungee, bungee cords holding them down. So there's no proper securement. Still bounces around a little bit, but again, you don't have a lot of rattles and stuff on the inside of it. One of the things that I'll kind of, I guess, knock the Bronco for, and I, and I have not, full disclosure, I have not, dri I've not driven the loaded Broncos at all. I'm not exactly sure what the level of materials inside the trim change as far as this is the black diamond package. So when you're talking about the dash and the door panels and whatnot, they're pretty hard plastics. There's not a lot of soft touch in these things. So I would expect the interior to rattle with 4,000 miles on it driving this road every day. <clears throat> I haven't noticed that, which is just impressive. Got about a quarter of a mile of gravel left. I'll probably cut this video here. Uh, we could do some on highway stuff later uh, in the video.
This is the second part of my commute. I am on the beautiful Natchez Trace Parkway. I realized in my last clip, I'll get out on, a, on the road here in just a second. I realized in my last clip that I was holding my camera a little too high and catching that eyebrow is a little distracting. So I'll try to keep my camera more at a uh, clear angle, I guess is the way I'd put that. So I've got the media mod on this GoPro, so the microphone should be fairly accurate and I'm gonna try to talk in a normal level as I get up to highway speeds. I wanted to show what the inside of the Bronco noise level is, is like. It's not a professional way of doing this, but compared to the Jeeps we've owned in the past, the inside of the soft top Bronco is, is considerably quieter. Now, I, full disclosure, I have not ridden in one of the new JLs with a soft top, so I don't have anything to compare that to. But we have had several JKs, and the JKs with the soft tops are pretty loud. Also, to note that I do run the Sasquatch size tires, that are, I believe, uh, 315, 75, 17. I think that's correct so that is uh i'll do another video video on the tires i'm running a 315 75 17 needle recon grappler which is their newer i would still consider it a hybrid tire so these tires are a good bit noisier than what some of the stock offerings from ford are on the bronco but as you can tell it's pretty easy to talk in here with a passenger. I'm running, currently I'm running about 58 miles an hour. And the speed limit is 50 miles an hour in a Natchez Trace. I can bring it up to 60 to be a little more realistic. That's uh, 60 right there. A Little bit of tire noise. I don't know if that's gonna come through on the microphone or not. There's no rattles on decent pavement. You don't hear the wind buffeting hardly at all. I know that's not gonna pick up. I can hear it if I listen for it, but the soft top on this Bronco is very quiet. There's no issues listening to the radio or talking to somebody in here with you. This road is relatively smooth, so it's not an indication of, of bad pavement. I could do a video on that. I, I might do that if somebody asked me to. Road manners on this Bronco are really good, especially with this tire setup. I do have a two inch lift on it. I'll do a, uh, I guess I'll do a shorter video with my phone later about the lift and the tires, and kind of do a review. There's not a lot of normal guy information on these tires out, out there on YouTube yet. It seems that there's so much money on YouTube now that you have a lot of very professionally edited videos and it's too hard to tell because there's so much lucrative money tied up into these videos anymore somebody's giving you a really honest review nobody pays me to do a damn thing so if i tell you something it, it is something i believe it may not be right but uh, you may not like the opinion but i'm going to tell you exactly what my experience is with it and you can take that for what it is Again, the, the ride is good. You, it rides like you would expect a solid axle, a solid rear axle SUV, four wheel drive to drive and ride in. Uh, I like it. So I'll get this closed out and uh, we'll see what else.